here's a big surprise I'm cooking again <laughs> okay so I wasn't gonna make a film this morning but I started breakfast and I was gonna just uh, make some eggs over easy with a toast and then I realized I had a bunch of leftover foods from the week so let me show you what I've got okay I'm gonna sit you down welcome back to the stove we're gonna lower you down here real quick and do a brief on what we got so we have some white rice here so steam rice is usually very sticky but this is about two or three days old and it's starting to dry out you can kind of see it's real loose now we eat a lot of Asian jasmine rice so it should be like in big clumps like you should be able to ball it up in your hand and then hold it as a rice ball well because it's dried out a little bit it's loose it's like Uncle Ben's rice different brands of rice will stick together differently this is supposed to be a real sticky rice and because it's like this it's not how we eat it but there's only a, about two or three handfuls left so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat it with some sesame oil not a lot I want to say about a teaspoon for this much and then I'm gonna I'm gonna stir it around and get it nice and coated right now I've in the pan over there I've got some really thinly sliced onions and thinly sliced garlic about half a half a onion and I want to say about four or five cloves of garlic all thinned up real thin and it's just lightly grilling and browning in the in the pan okay so this is nice and coated so once I throw it in the um, in the pan it's gonna not stick and stay loose I'm gonna bring you over to the pan real quick try to keep from dumping this camera into a hot pan and we're gonna stir it around just a little bit I keep it covered so everything stays moist and doesn't turn into uh, onion chips and we like that real brown look right there so I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit and here's the next step I'm picking you up taking you back over here to look at what we've got as far as the leftovers other leftovers that I made now a couple weeks ago I made like a, a spaghetti meat with carrots corn um, there's also onions and garlic sweet peppers and um, lots of vegetables in this with ground beef and tomatoes and I canned about four jars and during the week this week and last week when we felt like just boiling some spaghetti we would open the can up and just pour the jars out on top well now I have about a can and a half left I could keep this one for another month or two if I wanted to because it was canned and sealed but I only have about say two tablespoons of this left and I want to use it up today but it didn't I didn't feel like this was enough for a whole breakfast so I'm gonna take this and we're gonna dump it in the pan and heat this up with the onions and the garlic that we have grilling and here's the plan I'm gonna make kind of like a fried rice with the meat and the garlic and onions that's in the pan over there and I'm gonna stir it all around and get everything hot and melded together then I'm gonna break eggs over easy or sunny side up more like I'm gonna turn everything down real low and I'm gonna put break the eggs up over the top of the entire fried rice, fried rice and meat mix and we're gonna see how it turns out so I'm going to move you back over to the pan let's put our sesame oil away since we don't need this anymore and then start scooping meat in Now this meat seems hard and chunky because it's cold. It's going to start to loosen up and get juicy here in a minute. Okay, there's one jar. And then the second jar with just the few scoops that's left over. And 
And this all has not been planned. I mean, this was just something I thought of half an hour ago as a way to kind of use up all the food and leftovers that we had sitting in the fridge that I did not want to go to waste. Ironic as it is, though, if this does not get eaten and finished, I don't want to be stirring in my non-stick pan with a metal spoon, so I'm going to switch this out. If we don't finish all this food, the eggs and stuff and the rice, I may end up jarring this again. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to mash it down, mix it just a little bit, mash it down, and it smells good. All this grilled onion you see right here is just permeating the smell in the house. These are the sweet peppers. I think I'm going to break them up a little bit. Bobby likes sweet peppers whole because he likes taking big bites out of them. I have to admit, Sam and I are not as crazy about peppers as Bobby's it. Bobby is, but that's okay. We'll still eat them. Okay, I'm going to tune the heat back up just a little bit. Get all this stuff from sticking on the spoon. Now, if you wonder why I pile most of my food on this side of the pan, it's because this pan is not exactly even. So this side is where most of the heat is, and that's okay. Because I like to use this pan as kind of like a little bit of a lighter heat on one side. And more intense heat on this side, which I'm happy to leave the meat over. And I'm going to start to warm our rice in the lower heat. See how that works? I'm going to spread this out. Okay, so lighter heat over here, intense heat over here for the meat and the sauces, and I want that to kind of like uh, just kind of let it let the oils and stuff melt in, and then I'm going to mix them all together. But I'm going to cover this up so the stuff on top gets warm too. It's on a low heat. So I have my, my dials here. When this dial is pointed straight down, that's medium heat. I'm having it, which is basically five, but not everybody's oven is the same. So I have it on four. Actually, I'm going to turn it a little less than four. And I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and simmer. Real light, real low, low and slow, baby. We're gonna mix it in a few minutes and get everything warmed up because everything's pretty much already cooked and I don't wanna overcook the meat, but I want everything hot. I want the rice to absorb some of that moisture and I want everything to soften up, get kind of refreshed. So I'll be back in a little bit. When that's all done, I'm gonna do it, leave it for probably about 10 minutes and then we're gonna start the eggs. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back for now. Um, I know this sounds strange, but I'm going to intermingle two ideas in one here. Um, the one is the cooking here and the other one is just kind of a, I just realized like my laundry room's wide open and everything. So while I'm cooking, sometimes I'm and bending over. I'm also kind of like washing dishes while I'm cooking because if you could see those were the jars that I just opened up. I like to wash them while I'm cooking so I don't end up with a, just a sink full of junk and then nobody ever wants to wash dishes because it's so overwhelming. Another thing is when I'm bending over the stove, bending over the sink and doing stuff, um, working, working, I tend to neglect my body because my back gets tired. I have chronic like back pains and it just starts cramping up and feeling sore. So when you have those moments for like 10 minutes to step away, if you could hear it, the Cold Springs King is in the gym right now working out. And I go in there and I'll sit down on the floor and stretch for about five minutes. I mean, it, it, and then you feel kind of refreshed and continue cooking because sometimes, and I know some of you guys know this, when you're on a cooking project and it's like a three hour thing, your body gets kind of tired, your feet gets tired. Sit down, stretch, 
breathe, take a moment, relax. When you have those few minutes, do it because it will make the whole process of cooking more enjoyable. Um, one of the things about cooking is that it shouldn't be like a horrible chore. It should be fun. It should be something that you feel good about, especially afterwards. I'm realizing I got water on my glasses. So just an idea. The stuff is still simmering. It's almost done in about two minutes. We'll come back and we'll, um, we'll finish the egg part on it. I'll see you guys in a minute. Oh, mama mia, look at this. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out real quick. Whenever I'm cooking anything, especially when I'm going to have excess scrap foods, like eggshells, uh, carrot stumps, carrot peels, uh, excess lettuce trash, I always have kind of like a trash bin. I don't mean to gross you out, but this is my little trash canister. After we use up coffee or creamer or whatever, well, I'm not buying creamer anymore and you guys know why, but I kept the canister because I can close it because it will start, start to smell funky after a while. I also keep aside a container of glass for greases and stuff like that, bacon grease especially. But this one here is my eggshell reservoir. And what I do is whatever I don't use, um, like scraps that are biodegradable, I collect it all. I'll probably fill this one up here today and go dump it out in the garden box. There's a compost box out in our yard. Um, I throw it in there, cover it up, and just leave it and hope the girls don't get into the compost. So back to the food. This is starting to smell good. It's nice. You can actually see the meat starting to simmer. That's really good. I don't want to over simmer it because like I said, I don't need to recook this. I just need to heat it. And the, the rice is warm on top and it's nice and supple and soft, which is what I want. So we're going to mix the rice in with the meat and create like a nice soft fried rice. Usually when I make fried rice, I don't use like anything really wet because when I'm adding soy sauce or soy or um, hoisin sauce or however I'm flavoring my fried rice, that moisture softens the rice bits up. If you're wondering, when I make fried rice, I never make it with fresh rice, never. It's always like three or four day old steamed rice. For this reason exactly. If, if you make it with fresh rice that's sticky, it turns to mush when you cook it. And you can already see in here this rice is nice and soft, which is actually what I want. I want it to be perfectly soft, not overly mushy. Carrots. You see the carrots? Vegetables are really good to put in with your meats and your starches. Not to make a filler, although they do make a good filler, but because they're just good for you. Your body needs the vegetables. I'm starting to learn that in the past few months. I started looking at everything I was eating and realizing it was more meat and taters, meat and taters. And I was raised that way. And um, daddy's side of the family was all Texas, meat and taters. And if you had vegetables, it was corn on the cob. Okay, so I've got it mixed. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start making divots. I think I'm going to put in at least six or seven eggs. I'm making little reservoirs just to kind of hold the eggs. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. It doesn't have to be egg will find its way into the crevices of things. If there's anything you can always depend on egg to do, that is to get everywhere. All right, so here we go. We're going to pull our dozen over, and we're going to get cracking. Lovely thing about fresh eggs is they got nice, sturdy shells. And I'm not going to worry too much about having the yolk solid. If it pops, great, whatever. If 
it seems like I'm banging it everywhere. It's because I'm trying to find something solid enough to break the shell. <laughs> okay. Pick up the pace, Shannon. Pick up the pace. Because once these eggs start cooking, I want it to cook evenly. I don't want them to be uneven. And I know some people have got that knack for breaking eggs. Like one hand, whoop, it's in. I don't have that. Sorry. This is not... Was that Chef Ninja? Iron Chef. I love these fresh eggs because you can see like they're, I don't know if the color quality of the video can really express how orange and creamy these eggs look. These yolks are like dark and rich. Okay, I don't know if you caught that. An eggshell just chipped off and fell in there, so. Picking them out. And don't freak out if your eggshells break and if it's a really tiny piece. Eggshells have calcium. It's good for you. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna do one more on that side and yeah if you're wondering i'm not going to eat this whole thing by myself Ooh, that's a nice light egg you oh, put it there it's a different kind of chicken i'm sure okay wash the eggs off your hands before you start touching everything and then we're gonna set the heat to three cover her up I'm gonna give her a little jiggle to kind of manipulate egg white to even out. Okay, low and slow, baby, low and slow. The heat is set low to three, and I'm gonna walk away, and I think I'm gonna go, go in there with the Cold Springs King and do a few more stretches. There's also back exercises that he taught me and I thought it was a little weird at first because they look weird, but I mean, no exercises ever look graceful, really. But um, it really helps relieve my lower back. I mean, it's amazing how quickly it works. Anyways, this is not an exercise video, but I'm going to go do that. I'm going to let this just kind of simmer and do its thing. I know I'm sweating bullets today. And so, um, and we'll come back and we'll check on it. And I don't know about you, but I'm already hungry. I'm starving. It's like... 10 o'clock already we slept in I had a little coffee and that was it so that's not good I should stay on a routine but but this just sounded like a good idea and taking your time with food to make it right is always worth it so I'll be back and we'll check on and see how it looks all right brothers and sisters you ready for the uh, grand opening you can already see it now. The egg whites have cooked all the way up. These two up here are still a little bit, still a little bit soft. <laughs> Get a bubble. So I'm going to scoop my portion from the bottom and let it go for about, I'm going to turn off the heat, but I'm just going to let it sit and just kind of cook a little longer. So let's check this out. This is what I wanted. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to get the spoon right underneath the egg and put it on the plate. Let's, let's get the plate on here. Let's have this plate join the party, shall we? Okay. I'm going to get the other egg here. Don't want to spill rice. Ooh, that's hot. I see pieces of garlic, and I'm going to take the sweet pepper. Yes, I am. And meat. I'm going to scoop a little bit more for, um, for Bobby. He's going to want to eat some, too. We'll just share the plate. Oh, my gosh, I'm tearing it up. It's okay. When food is good, it is meant to be torn into. So, if you... I don't, I don't know if you can actually see this on the camera, but the rice, 
and the meat have kind of melded together and it's made a good chunk of like soft it's back to like almost back to being sticky rice okay so i'm gonna put the spoon aside i'm gonna cover this bad boy back up let those eggs up there kind of solidify a little bit and i'm gonna turn off the heat and i'm gonna bring you over here and this is what we're going to do to finish this off. I wanted to slice some cheddar cheese and put it on here. I always like cheese with my breakfast, but um, I ended up with Parmesan cheese. So we're going to do some Parmesan just around the top. Good to go. And... Oh, the egg yolk is nice and creamy. That's perfect. See that? That's how I want it. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to mix this up. All right, guys. Now, as they say in the barbecue world, ooh, I should wear my sweater. Anyways, <laughs> it's warm in here, so I had to take the sweater off. But as they say in the barbecue world, Pitmaster always has Pitmaster's privilege, which means they get to take the first bite. If you think this thing looks good, you should try it. And the beauty of this thing is that it was not planned it's a bunch of leftovers that are not going to go bad in the fridge. It's going to get eaten now because you made something new and delicious. Not that everything that you make is not delicious, but I understand that there is a monotony in when you make a big batch of food and you're eating it all week long. It's still good, but it gets old. So make something new out of it, right? Oh my God, it's so... That garlic. You guys should smell that garlic. <laughs> This is going to be a great breakfast to hold me over because it's about 1030 now. We're probably going to leave here around 11, 1130. We got a long day ahead of us. We got to go and gra grab groceries. We have a one appointment, one o'clock appointment to do taxes. We're going to be out well past two or three o'clock today and I'm going to get hungry and I'm probably not going to get a lunch. So this right here. This right here is going to hold me over until I get home and get ready to cook more food. <laughs> Tonight is Saturday and it's barbecue night, just like it always is on Saturday nights here at the Cold Springs Castle. So we're going to go and get some beef ribs and a pork shoulder, some chicken, just get some meats for the rest of the week and... I may or may not can something later. Who knows? But in the meantime, I'm going to have breakfast. You guys do you. If you have leftovers that sound like they'd be good together, make something out of it. Get creative. The worst that can happen is that it doesn't turn out. You eat a little bit of it. Maybe you can feed the rest of the dog. I don't know. It doesn't have to go to waste is my point. So you guys at least you know that um, you can make something new out of something old and um, make it your home. Thanks you guys for watching. Bless you guys. I felt it in my heart lately to start finding a way to bless you. And um, I've been thinking about it and praying about it. And this is what I've come up with. Everything that I do even when it's small and menial, like canning food or cooking leftovers, it sounds, it sounds not so spectacular, but with you do it with God in your heart, you're giving glory to God in every little thing you do. Every wonderful little dish you make, even food, celebratory or not, when you enjoy it and it makes you smile, that's the glory you're giving to God. So... All glory to God 
in this food here, in your work, in your labor, in your, your trials and your errors, even, even the stuff that don't work out. You tried and you learned and that knowledge is glory to God as well. So that's my one blessing. I wanted to make sure I start doing that in my videos from now on. So thanks for watching and you make it yourself. You make it your home, right guys? Love you.